بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Thank you very much everyone for joining us today on our podcast uh, live on Miked Up 416 on YouTube So um, for whoever is watching we want to greet you guys We have a great episode for today uh, Just before we get into the episode as we do um, always uh, the formalities So please uh, like and subscribe on YouTube Miked Up 416 uh, hit the bell icon uh, for future updates, uh, etc. And videos, so all, all the programs that we've done go live on uh, YouTube, so you can go back and actually view them. So please do that. Follow us on Instagram, MikeDup416, at MikeDup416. And uh, our umbrella organization, Sufi Council of Toronto. Alhamdulillah, I've been doing a lot of work for the last five years, so please go hit up uh, the social media on that and go follow. So follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, um, I think that's it. YouTube as well. So please go like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Uh, a lot of good stuff happening uh, throughout uh, many of the organization. We're live here in, from the Mecca Islamic Center in Scarborough, um, where we always hold, host our program. So we want to thank uh, all the brothers and uh, other viewers from all over the world um, that do watch us. So we get a lot of viewers from the UK. So I want to shout out to all my brothers uh, in the UK. Uh, who uh, show love and support so I want to greet uh, greet them and thank them for continuing support you know Hafiz Asif, Salman Ashraf they're all watching so thank you very much for for doing that and supporting also um, I want to introduce my panel so it's a rapid fire Q&A so when we posted our flyer um, for for this episode uh, we got an abundance of questions that came through a flood of them so hopefully uh, inshallah, we're going to try to get through a lot of the questions that were coming and then we're going to still continue to take questions um, for uh, today as well. So please send them in um, and we will get to as many as we can. Inshallah, we also have uh, our we have a guest who's going to video call in, uh, which I'm going to introduce after I introduce the panel. Um, our brother, our dear brother is going to be uh, doing his Kalma Shahada uh, live on Mic Up 416 and we're very happy and pleased about that. So I will introduce our brother there as well. And we also have a phone call coming in uh, from the penitentiary, uh, a brother who has some questions uh, looking into Sufism, Tasawwuf, Islam, etc., which we're going to take that call live on Mic Up 416. So uh, keep uh, tuning in, share this. So I'm still giving you guys some opportunity, share this. Um, just because this one is going to be a, a, an epic uh, conversation and a lot of good things that are happening from it where brothers are ca calling in and brothers are uh, taking their shahada uh, and we're happy and honored for them to, to be on our platform. So I will introduce them in a second, but uh, I'm going to introduce my esteemed panel for today. And uh, like uh, back by popular demand, Hafiz Emilat, Janab Motaram, Hafiz Bilal. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Hafiz Saab, how are you? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, mashaAllah. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's been a while since you've been on, uh, well, two programs. So thank you very much. <laughs> and then uh, directly sat in the front of me, uh, <laughs> the highlight of Mike Top 416, Khatibe <laughs> Ali Sunnat Janab Motram Amir Qadri Saab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Hafiz Bilal. Wa alaikum assalam. So thank you very much, dear brothers, uh, for, for coming and uh, being a part of this. So uh, right off the bat, um, we're going to bring on our first guest, um, Brother Umar. Uh, who is going to be uh, taking over the shahadat, but uh, taking his shahadat, inshallah, with us. So we're going to bring them on the screen, and we're going to have a good conversation with them uh, to start off our podcast. So I will greet them with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brother, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing, Aki? Uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Very nice and honored for you to be a part of our program. Uh, where are you calling from? Uh, Virginia, United States. Okay, Virginia. There's a lot of heat out there with Trump. I guess you're happy that he's out. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into the politics, but yeah, there's a lot of a lot of heat right. in Virginia. But thank you very much um, for for joining us and 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 choosing our platform to have this conversation with. We're honored for you to be on uh, our platform. 
So first and foremost, um, you know, uh, I know you wanted to have a uh, kind of a I know you had some questions, so we're going to save that uh, towards the end. Um, and uh, Alhamdulillah, I just want to talk about uh, your experience. Um, you know, you, you were you took, uh, I guess you took your Shahada and uh, but you weren't satisfied uh, in, in regards to Islam and all of those things. So let's touch on that first. Uh, okay, uh, satisfied would probably be, <laughs> um, lack of better terminology, yet, uh, upon me taking my shahada, um, you know, we were, I, I grew to understand Islam up right. under a community where takfir was something that we learned before we learned about tasawwuf. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> which is a, a relatively new term to me, which, uh, completely change the dynamics of islam as a whole for me okay but um it was a lot of memorization you know um, right. the outward things we learned a lot about islam Aqidah. right um, alhamdulillah for the fact of being able to be benefited by these topics but right we weren't uh exposed to those things that help islam resonate on the heart you know okay um to draw okay. closest to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to draw uh, increased love for allah and things of this nature. So right. uh, Iksan and Tasawwuf is this, those things that were uh, not exposed to us. Okay. So example Inshallah. being, uh, you know, when they say that we'll be asked three questions in the grave, you yes. know, for us, they would teach us, you know, learn the name of the prophet, the year he was born, <laughs> uh, from the tribe of Quraysh, and this is sufficient. You know, as long as you remember that, then you're fine. And it's like, you don't know the prophet though you don't lo you can't love the prophet just by simply memorizing mashallah mashallah so that's a type of uh educational system that i was pretty much raised upon okay but um to allude to to that fact though um that was in a penal system um which we pretty much have uh one school of thought pretty much in america yes um that people refer to it as Salafi Dawa. A lot of people don't understand the dynamics of it, right. um, the term of it, and things of that nature, the sciences and uh, things of this nature. But um, Alhamdulillah, you, you know, uh, we picked up what we could, um, but it was a lot that we uh, did not, we, we was missed off, uh, we missed that as, as well. Okay. So um, with that saying, being said, it was a lot that, we we got into our minds but it didn't resonate on the heart so right upon relief for a lot of brothers that i witnessed in myself as well um you know we would come back home from that type of environment and right. islam would be something that would be harder to practice right you know it, right. it's hard to practice something that you simply just memorize right 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 and right so um with with this concept of islam like the increasing of uh performing vicar, uh, right. you know, getting into Tazkia and things of this nature, it right. gives it a true, dim it gives it a dimension, dimension that it's been missing. And so, right. Alhamdulillah, I'm glad uh, that, you know, you all have helped me find that. So. Alhamdulillah, no, it's, it's, it's good. And we can get into uh, Brother Omar, like about in regards to Tasawwuf and, and all of that. But I just want to touch on and allude on something that you said that caught my, caught my eye. Um, and it was in the sense of knowing the Prophet alayhi salatu uh, So memorizing and uh, you can't know someone by just memorizing when they were born and all of these things. And the biggest thing in regards to knowing the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is studying the seerah, uh, understanding he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what he did for us, the sacrifices he has done. The, 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 him being a mercy for us in, in this life. If it wasn't for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is nothing. Not just Islam, there is nothing. There is no world, there is no nothing. So um, it, 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 it's, it's kind of uh, saddening to see that, that this is what it, was, uh, what it was taught. But alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you're obviously on the, the line of tasawwuf. May I ask um, if uh, one question is, what intrigued you about Islam? What was the main thing that intrigued you about Islam? Uh, this is short history. Yep. My mother actually, uh, so I come from a household as to where my mom was like uh, this theological studies person, right? Right. And uh, so we went through Christianity, Judaism, and things of this nature. She was trying to find a way. And uh, my father had 
you know, um, he said that he understood Islam. And, you know, at this time, I'd never seen him praying, never seen him doing the acts of Islam that we know of. Right. Um, but he had a Quran and my mother, she took to it, she grasped to it. And that's what her heart clung to up until the day that she passed away. And, um, you know, before she did pass away, it was something that she kept encouraging me to do. And that's when I looked into it um studied it studied the quran uh with the brother and right. everything in it made sense to me um mm -hmm. the understanding that uh the concept of allah because you know we come from an atmosphere where you know the the only religion that we have a choice is christianity yeah, you know yeah, jesus yeah. is you know god is and he died for our sins and things <laughs> of this nature right. and those things never made sense to me i had so many opportunities where uh people would try to get me to uh, get baptized or whatever the case may be, but right. it never resonated with my heart. I never, right. never got baptized. Right. And so Islam was the only religion that actually made sense to my heart. And so right. I was drawn Mashallah. to it. Him Mashallah. To, uh, Mashallah. That's beautiful. Honestly, that's a, it's a, it's a touching story. And the sto and in regards to, you know what? And I, and I always uh, turn back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, where that he, he chooses who he puts on Sirat al mustaqim meaning the path of the righteous ones in which he has favored. And when you are on that path and in Allah has chosen you to be on that path, no one will ever go astray. But if you go astray, you'll never be able to come back without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's such a touching story. May Allah give barakah in your life. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless you and, and uh, continue to build your Iman on the correct Aqidah of the Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. I'm happy for you, my brother. And I'm going to introduce my elder brother, um, Janab Amir Kadri, and uh, he will follow through with the Kalma Shahadat, inshallah. And then I think you have some questions, and we'll get to that. As salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I heard so much about you, and it's finally a pleasure to see you. Alhamdulillah, likewise, Aki. All right, brother, before we go to the testimony, has anyone forced you to do your renewal no. of faith? Oh, this no. is upon your own will? Alhamdulillah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. So, brother, we'll, we'll do the declaration of faith now, uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> Bismillah. You're going to repeat after Bismillah. me? Bismillah. Bismillah. Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. Nir Rahim. Nir Rahim. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa Ashadu. Wa Ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan Abduhu Abduhu Wa Rasulu Wa Rasulu I bear witness I bear witness That there is no deity of worship That there is no deity of worship Except Allah Except Allah And Muhammad And Muhammad Is Is The messenger the messenger of Allah. Of Allah. I bring Iman. I bring, I bring Iman, Iman upon Allah. I'm bringing Iman upon Allah. Upon the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Upon the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bring Iman. I bring Iman upon predestination. Upon predestination, I bring Iman. I bring Iman upon the angels. Upon the angels, I bring Iman. I bring Iman upon the afterlife. Upon the afterlife, I bring Iman upon which I'm, I don't know about the ghaib. Alhamdulillah. I'm bringing man mm. upon the guy. Which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we're going to do a dua, brother. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah, we're going to do dua, brother. 
Mashallah. I'm going to do dua, brother, and then I'm going to uh, congratulate you. So we're all going to do dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu. Wahdahu. La sharika la. La sharika la. Lahu al-mulk. Lahu mulk. Wala. Wala. Hul. Hul. Hamd. Hamd. Wa huwa. Wa huwa. Ala. Ala. Kulli. Kulli. Shay'in. Shay'in. Qadir. Qadir. You're going to, brother, repeat after me. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. The sins that I didn't know. The sins that I didn't know. About. About. The sins that I did know. The sins that I did know. And I did commit. And I did commit. Forg- ya Allah. Ya Allah. Forgive me. Forgive me. For my minor and major sins. For my minor and major sins. Ya Allah, accept my testimony of faith. Ya Allah, accept my testimony of faith. And my declaration. And my declaration. Of faith. Of faith. For the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. And accept my dua. And accept my dua. Allah, now in these two minutes, brother, you're going to repent on your own in the two minutes while I do dua in Arabic for you. In these two minutes, you're going to do dua for your own self. A one-on-one between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And brother, you can repent. You can say whatever you can in silence while I do dua for you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As-salatu wa salamu alaykum. Ya Rasulullah wa salamu alaykum. Ya Habibullah. Salli ala nabina. Salli ala Muhammad. Ya Allah ta'ala. Brother Umar has brought iman upon Islam. Ya Allah, forgive his sins. Ya Allah, forgive his major and minor, major and minor sins. Amen. Ya Allah ta'ala, forgive his sins. Ya Allah, for this brother, for, for the sake of this brother, Dick. Declaring Islam, forgive our sins. Amen. Ya Allah. His brothers, forgive. Ya Allah, forgive all of the minor and major sins that he has committed. And ya Allah, make him on the straight path. Make him understand Islam. Yeah. Make him understand Islam, the correct path of Islam. And the, and the path of the mustaqim, or salaf al-salihin, or the ahli sunnah wa jama'ah. Ameen. Brother Umar, as-salatu. As-salatu. Wassalamu. Wassalamu. Alayka. Alayka. Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah. Wassalam. Wassalam. Alayka. Alayka. Ya. Ya. Habib Allah. Habib Allah. Ameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen MashaAllah alhamdulillah mubarak brother mubarak to you mubarak Mabrook mabrook MashaAllah many many congratulations May Allah continue uh, to bless you, bless your iman, bless your family and uh, allow you to continue to learn uh, the deen and we are always here for you uh, to guide you, be with you, you're not uh, alone uh, we, we're, we're here together with you in, uh, in, in this uh, struggle that we call life. Uh, just know that uh, all of us, me and my team and the panel, everyone is with you. And uh, we're here with you in spirituality. We're here with you uh, if you need us to be there, no matter what. So all the doors are open. You have channels to, to get to, to us uh, no matter what. So I just wanted to put that out there. So I know you have some questions. Um, so maybe what we'll do is, uh, because we have the other brother uh, who is calling us uh, from the penitentiary, um, he had some questions as well. So I'll take your questions um, and then I will note them down and then we will answer them. 
um, during the podcast. Is that is that okay? Alhamdulillah, yeah. Okay, Bismillah. All right, so um, the first question that I wanted to ask uh, comes from the Hadith of Jibreel. Um, okay. When we go over, uh, when he talks about Iman, and it's to believe in a lot of angels, the books, you know, et cetera. Yep. Um, and we also talk about how he, the Prophet Sallallahu also spoke about how Iman increases and decreases. Right. Okay. And, yep. um, you know, for some, you know, if you think about it, you'd be like, uh, how can your Iman increase on the certainty of these things? Like, you always will know that Allah, you know, I always have faith in Allah. I always have um, faith in the angels. Like, I know that they're real. But right. the actuality, the, I just want the explanation on the actuality of a man increasing and decreasing. Okay. Um, Got it. Know, the true definition of it. Sure. Um, and also, on um, Xan is to know that um, Allah sees you, right? Yes. Um, well, it's a it's a more detailed definition in that, but um, to to act as to, to, to live as though Allah sees you, right? Uh, right. As, as if you could see Allah, even though you can't see Him, know that He sees you. Um, okay. Just wanted more detail behind uh, Xan, how one could. If one could reach that level, right, and <laughs> which okay. uh, everyone should be striving to do, to know the description of uh, what that may be like, how one could, you know, if there's details, if one could know that they tasted the uh, sweetness of Xan or things of this nature, you know, okay, if there was some type of characteristic behind the description of reaching that level. Sure, very good question. And those are really my two questions that I really wanted to have someone expound upon sure. uh, or explain. And sure. so with that, uh, I'm complete. No, inshallah. So during the uh, the podcast, uh, we will answer that question. And uh, once again, we want to congratulate you, give you Mubarak on uh, fulfilling your testimony. Mashallah, so, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, brother. So anytime, feel free, 24-7, we're here uh, for you and with you, inshallah. 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 Mashallah. So that was uh, that was very good. Emotional. It yeah, was very, it was very, very good to uh, be a part of that, and um, you know the story really really touched us. I think we're gonna get a call uh, straight from the the penitentiary. Um, so inshallah, we will we will talk about that. So um, I'm just waiting for the brother to give us a call. So meaning to say, somebody doing their testimony, somebody doing their testimony live for us is a very big deal. And uh, we have to act as brothers to kind of help. Uh, it's our duty to help him, brother Omar, through this struggle um, and learning. Because you remember when we started learning Islam, right? So Hafiz Bilal, what would you say to this? Mm -hmm. Firstly, I would say, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً we're all brothers in Islam. Mashallah. Right. And as your brother, you should be looking after him. For sure. Right. He reached out to us. It's our responsibility to take care of him. No, mashallah. And uh, it's good. Like, look how they, a word gets out, right? So this is another um, kind of message to, to everybody. You know, share it. You don't know who you're, like, might be searching for. But see, these, brother, these, bro these brothers were um, following us for a long period of time. Yeah. And uh, this brother, Umar, um, was always questioning through another brother, so Alhamdulillah, this was his time to come and. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah, I got that phone call coming of course, through of now. Course, of course, of course. rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. Sorry, who 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 who's calling, brother? Uh, this uh, this is uh, brother Yusuf. Oh, brother Yusuf, how are you? Doing okay. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for calling in. All right. Thank you very much for calling in. Uh, you had some questions, brother? Um, yeah, just uh, some, some general questions. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm constantly studying, you know, trying to better my dean. And um, my question was regarding uh, tawakul. Tawakul. And how, and how does one um, develop, uh, you know, this aspect of, of Islam um, in one's daily life? Like, how does one make that a reality um, in one's daily life? 
Okay. Okay. We'll take that. We'll take that question. Now we're actually writing it down and then we're going to answer it during the podcast, uh, inshallah for you. And then, uh, and where, where are you calling from brother Yusuf? Uh, I'm calling from uh, State Farm Correctional Center in uh, Virginia. Okay. So I want to give you congratulations uh, that you're calling in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you um, and make it easy for you. And uh, continue to uh, keep you on the, st on the steadfast of the deen. And it's a very big honor for you to call us uh, all the way out from uh, Virginia, uh, America. So Allah make it easy for you. And uh, we're always here for you. And uh, hopefully you come home soon very quickly. Inshallah. 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 You had some more questions? Is any, is the, it, well, one of my questions is there any way that, um, that you brothers could help me uh, to connect with um, you know, people who can help to uh, strengthen my Islam um, you know, on a regular basis? You know what I mean? Like, right. I can, you know, I can make phone calls, you know, um, right. I can write uh, through uh, emails. Right. And uh, I just really want to be in contact with, um, you know, brothers who can, um, you know, give me uh, guidance on, uh, the, 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 on the, um, the path. Right. So that I can, um, you know, further strengthen my Islam. MashaAllah. No, you know what? You called the right place. Alhamdulillah. We are your brothers. So right. what I will get to, what I'll get uh, Brother Karim, um, to, to, give a, to give our email address to you. Right. And uh, feel free. Anytime. You can have mine. You can have my elder brothers. We're all here for you. If you have any right. questions, you want reading material, you have uh, you know, something on your mind, we're, we're here for you. We're not going to leave you uh, astray. So we can do that for you. That's not a problem. Okay. Um, and, and just in general, you know, I just, uh, you know, I thank the brothers for, um, you know, for the work that they're doing. And, um, sure. You know, if, if it's, you know, possible that, because there's other brothers in, you know, this system um, down here in Virginia right. that are not exposed to uh, Islam in its entirety. Right. Right. We're, we're, we're exposed to um, small portions of Islam. Right. Um, a lot of uh, the Islam that we learn is, uh, you know, based on the Salafi uh, Akita. Right. And, um, you know, and a lot of times this is it. You know, a lot of brothers... Um, don't get an opportunity or get the chance to learn Islam, you know, from, you know, people who uh, have a, a, a wider um, understanding of Islam in general. And right. so, you know, a lot of times we're learning just from books. Right. Um, and it would be very helpful uh, if the brothers could, you know, come together. And, you know, I mean, I know there's, a, you know, there's, a, you know, a thousand um, penitentiaries and, you know, thousands of people. Um, you know, probably having these types of requests, but I know that in Virginia system, um, in the Virginia penitentiary system, that this is one of the things that has uh, hindered us for years. Right. Um, you know, and it's only it's only through the the grace of Allah that you know, Allah has um, you know guided me to uh, you know cert certain brothers, you know, you guys uh, included, um, that has allowed me to you know further my Islam. But you know, I mean, and, and it's a constant process uh, for me. Um, but I know that there are other brothers who are, you know, in worse situations than me with regards to um, not just uh, the Islam, but the time that they have. You know, you have right. some brothers who don't have, um, you know, short sentences. They have, you know, 25, 30, 40 years life sentences. And these brothers really need help right. to be able to, you know, prepare themselves for the hereafter. Right. And, you know, it's not right now at this point in time, it's not available to us. Right. And, uh, you know, if, if, um, you know, if, if the brothers could, uh, you know, mashallah, you know, help us in this regard, you know what I mean? I would like to, you know, help um, facilitate in between, right. you know, whatever I can do. You know what I mean? I, I, I actually come home in, um, in two years, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, you know, and, you know, I, inshallah, I will be in the, uh, in the Toronto area also. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, I would just like to, you know, for brothers to, you know, come up with some ideas. It can help to facilitate, um, you know, the ease of uh, of, of learning in, in um, this particular uh, penitentiary system. No, you know what, it, it, brother Yusuf, I think it's uh, it's very it's very good and it's very needed. Um, just because you know we often tend to paint a picture of somebody because of a mistake. Allah is the most forgiving. Why can't we forgive? Just because right. you know you you. 
you're in you're in a penitentiary doesn't make you less than me and that's the difference between muslims nowadays who just neglect oh they you know they're in the bin and and whatnot it's not like that you're you're a muslim brother for life so uh, i will connect with uh, brother kareem and uh, and we got to figure something out if we can do something virtually um uh, because we're out here in toronto um right. and you guys are out in virginia you know once this coronavirus uh stuff finishes the pandemic restrictions open up then absolutely if we can do something definitely we can come and and do that it's not a long drive for us anyways uh from toronto they have, they have a they, uh, not to interrupt you but they have a muslim chaplain services yeah um it's a, a you know association that they have in um the virginia penitentiary system right and um you know they they uh I, you know they welcome help yeah you know from you know um outside people right um and maybe you guys can get in contact with them absolutely um, and inshallah, you know, then, you know, the, the, the ease of education could be facilitated a little easier. You know, a lot of us, you know, in here, um, you know, we take, you know, we take the, the, the religion very, very serious. MashaAllah. Um, you know, because of our situation. Yeah. Um, because of how we grew up. Yeah. Um, and, and, and because, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us and blessed us with Islam. Sure. Mashallah. And you know, and and a lot of us are very hungry for more. Right. You know, it, but a lot of times we get caught up in just, um, just the material that we already have. You know right. What I mean? Right. And a lot of times that material, um, it, it's not enough. You know, without somebody that is there to guide us. Um, you know, one of the principles is is, is to have a shake or have you know a person yeah. of knowledge that can help you. you Absolutely. Know, guide you through the path. Absolutely. Of, you know, I, this will be um of utmost. Uh, importance for you know us and you know we would have you know the utmost gratitude um, oh, for sure. you know, towards uh you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for you, know, the blessing. you know what brother Yusuf we've been working on some stuff in a syllabus and stuff like that online I'm going to connect with uh, brother Karim um and we're going to put this thing together like if we can figure out a way that you can get online and and we will teach this sure. to you guys on a weekly basis so that's what I'm willing to do for you and and any brothers that are there that we can get the access for. So I'll connect with Brother Kareem and we'll put something together. In the meantime, uh, we'll, I'll send the email out to Brother Kareem to give to you. So then at least we can get the ball rolling on uh, on conversations and reading materials and, and stuff to, such like that. But Brother brother Yusuf, I, I really, really appreciate you calling. It's an honor for you to be... I appreciate you guys, that, you know, um, you know, the work that you guys are doing, you know, when the Thank brother told me that, uh, you know, I was going to be, um, you know, uh, I hope to the Muslims in general, you know, by being on the podcast, yeah. you know, I was, uh, you know, I was very happy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. My first real interaction with, you know, a lot of people in the outside world other than my family and, right. you know, brother Kareem and my, you know, but, um, you know, so I thank you guys also, man. No, no, we appreciate it. And like I said, man, we're, we're here for you. Always, you don't have, you don't got to worry. Like you know, we can get connected. You can call us directly, etc. We just want you to know that you're not alone, you know. And and we love you for the sake of Allah and His Habib, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thank you very much, brother. And then we're gonna answer your question now. So uh, thank you once again, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. So that was uh, Brother Yusuf. Alhamdulillah. So, um, you know, two good things we wanted to kind of start the program off with. Alhamdulillah, one brother took a shahada. One brother called us from a penitentiary, seen the work that we're doing. Alhamdulillah. So this comes to show. So for brothers out there um, and those who are watching, you know, our, our sisters, etc. Please share the link, you know, spread the word out. You know, we're doing a lot of good work. Support the team. Um, by liking, subscribing, and sending videos out. So we're going to jump right into the questions. I know everybody's been waiting. So we'll get into Brother o Umar's questions first, and then we'll go into the questions that I've received and Brother Bilal has received, etc. So the first one, increase and decrease of Iman, uh, taken by the, the hadith of Jibra'il alayhi salam. So if we can explain the increase and decrease of Iman. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in front of me here, of course. Everything that we prove, we prove from the Quran and Sunnah. Sahih Muslim Sharif in front of me. Um, to, because the uh, question was ahadith. Yeah. Uh, it's from the ahadith of Jibreel. So, uh, Brother Umar, the, the book of faith is what the ahadith of Jibreel is in front of me. The difference between the faith in Islam and faithfulness is to have faith in obligatory. 
to affirm and believe in the divine decree and the proof of the punishment, so the grave that we spoke about, and the one who does not believe in the, uh, the divine decree, Rasulullah said, within the help of Allah, we are going to begin our book and whom alone we are satisfied indeed. Our sex success would be achieved only by the help of Allah. So <clears throat> in this uh, hadith of Mubarak, uh, Rasulullah said, the first man to argue and deny the matter of the decree, I, Humaid ibn Abdul Rahman al Hamari, were leaving the pilgrimage of Umrah, and when he said, Would that we meet the companions of the Messenger of Allah, blessings be peace upon him, so ask him about what has been said concerning about the divine decree. Our presence coincided with Abdullah bin Umar al Khattab entering in the mosque. The companion, I surrendered him. One of us stood on the right of the one stood on the left. I accepted that my companion would allow me to speak. I, Abdul Rahman, many people in the region came to recite the Holy Quran and seek and collect knowledge. He mentioned that the affairs of their good qualities and concern about their religion. They claim that there is no sign of divine decree. Right? So the question was about... Uh, Hadith of Jibreel and Rasulullah is saying to have the Iman and Hassan, I believe was the other question, going to uh, well, how to get closer. So you have to have Iman of the predestination. Mm. This is what the Hadith of Jibreel was saying, uh, relating about, and this is what Rasulullah was saying, and this was in front of me. MashaAllah. Okay, so in regards to Ihsan. Uh, he wanted, uh, Brother Omar wanted an explanation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi again, here in the Sahih Muslim, O Messenger of Allah, what is faithfulness? The, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi it is worship of Allah. If you see him, indeed, if you are unable to see him, feel that you, that you see him. So if you can't see him, enable that, that he's seeing you. And if you can see him, that is an ability. Him, you should put in mind that he sees you. O Messenger of Allah, when you, when would be the doomed hour? The Prophet replied, the one who has asked has no better knowledge or of it inquired. But I'm going to tell you some of its uh, portents. When the slave girl will give birth to its owner, and the second of the uh, opponents are the shepherd of the beast would compete in the construction of huge buildings. This is the hour of destruction. These are the five signs of Unseen events, and we're witnessing too. We mentioned this already, and which no one knows but Allah. Then the Messenger of Allah says, Verily, the knowledge of the hour only knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows only. So, obtaining Hassan is to understand the five pillars of Islam, to understand as well, to get closer to perfection of the deen, is to understand all of the testimony of Islam. MashaAllah. So, this was in Ahadith of Jibreel. Yeah. Um, with regards to Iman first, there's also 70 branches of Iman. For sure. Right? Among them, one of them is Haya, modesty. Mm -hmm. And the lowest level of Iman is to, if you see something in the path, an obstacle in a way, and you remove it, that is the lowest level of Iman. MashaAllah. Now, with regards to Ihsan, if I just add on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ihsan, in its literal meaning, is excellence or perfection. Yeah. Right? So, how do you... How do you do something when, or if, how do you perform an act if you have in your mind that Allah is watching you at all times? Mm -hmm. You're going to do it with utmost perfection. Yeah. Right? That's how the ulama say, how do you perfect your salah? Pray your salah as, as if, if you're in front of Allah or if Allah is watching, watching you. you. Yeah. Right? Because that uh, leaves out impurifications. No, you know what? That's, uh, that's probably the deepest part. And the other one that I, I want to talk about is like Ramadan. So in the month of Ramadan, everybody, you know, starts to um, obviously read their tarawih, their fasting, obviously. They have khawf of Allah, right? They're God-fearing in the month of Ramadan. Brothers are growing beards, sisters are wearing their hijabs, you know what I mean? Their burqas even. Um, so you start, to, you start to see that in the month of Ramadan. Why? Because you think Allah is watching you. So if we were God-fearing all the time, then it would be great. Because then you will know, okay, like Salah, Allah is watching me or I'm standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? 100%. So uh, one question that came through um, before we get into Brother Yusuf's question uh, was about mannerism, um, like purifying your manners, etc. Right? So w the question that I would come up with, I guess dialogue for Hafizab in regards to mannerism. The easiest thing to understand for me and the way I tell people if they ask me like, you know, 
Uttana Batna, how should I stand, sit, etc.? How should I eat? All of this. No one is better than the Prophet. <laughs> And his beloved companions, starting with Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Afzalul Bashar, Badul Anbiya, Bid Taqiq, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Radiallahu An, and then all of the rest of the companions, etc. You know, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Usman, Sayyidina Ali, um, in that order. Um, but what I mean is the mannerism. Where do we get mannerism from? And who should we take it from? Which is the question. But I put your take on it. Um, the first responsibility goes to the parents, mm. right? Parents are supposed to teach your kids. How to behave, teach them akhlaq, yeah. right? Um, now, if you ask where's the source of that, you explained it perfectly. Kana khuluquhul Quran, Sayyidina Aisha said, uh, regarding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was like a walking, talking Quran, and then the, and the companions and then the pious predecessors following, we get akhlaq from them. Now, in terms of role models or like who we should be following in terms of akhlaq too, is that if you have older brothers or siblings mm -hmm. who are also practicing, right. follow them. For sure. You know? You have just, an elder in the community, you know, just like a sheikh or, you know, imam, absolutely. a teacher. Absolutely. Someone that holds respect, you should follow them. Mashallah. Mashallah. So let's get into Brother Yusuf's question. This is like rapid fire. So I know you're, uh, the question is for you, Janab Amir Qadi Sahib. Is the basic sense of tawakkul, bidaya. So trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so if we can describe tawakkul. Um, in regards to that, I think that was the, the brother's question, is what is the essence of tawakkul? Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> um, basically, in tawakkul, uh, we're going to take uh, the references from, uh, of course, our uh, of the awliya. So here, mysticism and of understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, give it an example of tawakkul is fasting in Ramadan. Mashallah. For example, when they annihilate themselves, all they see is Allah. Wow. The rahm of Allah, the fuzzle of Allah. So, tawakkul is actually, you cannot picture Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. You can Anything uh, that you think about, Allah is different from that. So, having Allah in your mind of creation, of how He looks and whatever, this is kufr. But having tawakkul, having iman upon Him, so uh, here, uh, once again, we have um, the great Tasawwuf Ulam uh, Hazrat Junaid Baghdadi says, Mashallah. There is the grace of God which he bestows whomever he likes. There is a kind of mysticism which is the result of acquisition. And uh, by leading life in a particular way, you would open the channels through up which grace follows. And then he gave in Marifa a hadith. Rasulullah said, the word has again applied to inner doctrines of the religion. The disciple admitted that there was a mist and mystic. So basically the secret of the beloved is better relished when explained in the language of others. So it's really deep to understand uh, these, um, the answering of tawakkul, but understand this in a, in a simplified way of tawakkul is Everything by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having faith upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So question into uh, Hafiz Bilal, a question came through. How much review should you do minimum for a new hufaz that is juggling school? Say at the very least, daily. You know, because the end goal or the target should be that on the day of Qiyamah, your maqam as a hafiz will be determined how much of the Qur'an you know. Mm -hmm. You'll be asked to recite from Surah Fatiha and then where you stop is your maqam. Gotcha. Right? The more you can read, the higher you rank in paradise. You mean straight? The higher you Masha. can, the more you can read, right? Until <laughs> you make that mistake or where you, know, where you stop, like you can't continue more. Yes. That becomes your state or that becomes your rank in Jannah basically. That's Masha what Allah. I've heard. MashaAllah. Right? Masha now if you're juggling school, you're busy, no problem. Why don't you read it during Salah? Mm. Right, you have a day off. You know, you have weekend. Maybe spend an hour to revise it, and then right. during the week, read it during salah. Right, that's just one tip. Mashallah, mashallah. Okay, so we'll go into some more questions um, about Mus. Uh, sorry, the question came in. I've heard that there were Muslims, specifically African Muslims, in the New World before Columbus arrived in 1492. Is there any truth to that? Uh, yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There is. Um, has there Mansa Musa? was the emperor of Mali in Timbuktu. His elder brother was Hazrat Mansa Abu Bakr II. Mm. He had went 
Remember, Africa was all blacks and Africans, and there was no white people on that continent. There was no Arabs. There was all black. The history, we have to understand the history. Some of these Caucasian people, they have eliminated their correct history and the Western world. They're not going to tell you exactly, exa they can't bear the fact to tell you that black people ruled the world one time too. And Hazrat Mansa Musa was the richest emperor in the world. Mm. And he was African and his uh, kingdom was in Timbuktu. His brother, Hazrat Mansa Abu Bakr, he went far as the Americas before Columbus. And then when the white man came and they went to Brazil and into America, they asked and they seen coins of Africa. Mm. They asked the natives of that time, where was this from? So they appointed that these people came 200 years before Columbus right. and they were trading with the natives of South America and America those times. Wow. Okay. Um, because we don't have too much time to go into discussion, uh, we're just going to keep uh, firing them out. Uh, any of you want to jump in, just jump in. What is the reality of the supposed enlightenment of non-Muslim mystics and sages? Does the concept of enlightenment have any meaning in Islam? Now, when we talk about enlightenment, we're talking about when you... Um, brother, uh, brother, um, uh, brother Bilal, um, Surah Kafirun, Talawat, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما أعبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم وليدكم. We don't take your deen from them. We cannot take deen from a non-Muslim. Only the hak is the Muslim. Is right in Surah Kafirun. Is recited. If you write recite Surah Kafirun correctly, that say, O Muhammad, to them, O Kafirun. Right. Our iman is our religion is nothing like your religion. At the end, what dinukum? Well, Yadin, our religion is not like your religions. Take, tell them we cannot take anything. There's no truth in what they say in the non-Muslims. So here, Ahadith Mubarak, Rasulullah has said, he replied, the people of delegate, the tribe of Abdul Qais came to you, Prophet Rasulullah who are the people? He said, they replied, we are from the tribe of Rabi'a. Then the Rasulullah said, welcome people of delegate, Abu Qais, there will be a disgrace. Uh, nor you will regret. They said, O oh, Apostle, we come through you for a long journey, a far distance, but we cannot accept the sacred months. This is infidel tribe. This was the infidel tribe. So please place an order to do something good in order we can may inform the people that we left behind and they may enter paradise upon it. Rasulullah forbid four things. He ordered them to believe in Allah alone, that they were kuffar. Okay, he meant to believe in Allah under he played that his apostle knows best. And he told him about Ramadan, and then he told him about obligatory charity. Right? But then he ordered them. So this is what Allah uh, this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying to that question. So they had to become Muslim first. Mm. Okay. Also in regards to enlightenment. Um I think it's referring to that to reach to achieve that state in which you obtain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think one of the one of the stepping stones or one of the first ways you can go about that is in the Quran it says mm -hmm. and sent to you were enlightened proofs right start by studying the Quran yeah. that's where you'll find your proof of enlightenment yeah and ordering Muslims to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and his messenger blessing peace be upon him and is the task of religious laws and regulations and ordering also to call for to ask to understand it Rasulullah is saying this in Sahih Muslim Sharif. We can only take the deen from Muslims. MashaAllah. So what is uh, the permissibility of trading on the stock market? Trading on stock market, my brother, uh, there's <clears throat> if the trading market is anything to do with riba, with interest, then it's haram. Uh, in the Quran, uh, Hafiz uh, Bilal, you would uh, actually look this up too. That anything to do with Rabah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded that that is fighting with Allah itself. Allah has re replied with this, uh, especially with riba, which, uh, with interest, that he does not dislike interest. But stock market, uh, it's, it's very vast now and modern too. So there's ikhtilaf in this position as well. You have to understand, and we can't say everything is haram, but trading and having stock market with halal enterprises is jazz. Yeah. Okay. If they're uh, if, what? 
Mm-hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Halal enterprises. So something that, um, like for example, making mass mess, uh, guns and uh, tobacco and some things are bad for you. You don't really want to invest in. Yeah, yeah. They are making bad things, and especially haram products, right. alcohol or whatever, pork and all this. This is haram. So we cannot do stock markets in those, but you can invest if there's something uh, in the stock market that does not have any riba. And it has um, halal investments, and they're all halal investments now. Yeah. So you should look into that. Yeah, and the other thing is, is uh, if if everybody's trading at an equal value, like if you're paying something else, I'm paying something else. My interest is something. Someone's interest is not. There's no none of that equality in it. Then it is uh, permissible. But other than that, it is wrong. Go ahead, Hafiz Bilal. Just one quick trivia: is that the longest ayah in the Quran is in regards to riba, of interest, mm. yeah. and there's a this whole portion of Surah Ali Imran is dedicated. Sorry, Surah, Surah Baqarah is dedicated to business and interest. Yeah, it's in the third juz, and people should take a read at that. No, too, no, so absolutely, yeah. and uh, that's why it's very sticky. It's a sticky uh, question, uh, but you have to do your your research uh, in regards to it. Um, can a Muslim invest in a medical? <laughs> Can a Muslim invest in a medical marijuana company or a pharmaceutical company involved in medical marijuana research? No, you can't. It's haram. We just answered that question. So uh, investing in a marijuana. So people think that marijuana is not, uh, it's, it's not, it's not written in the Quran. So we use qiyas. I think we mentioned this before. So if it's not proven from Quran, sunnah, ijma, we use qiyas, meaning common term and relation. And Kiyas tells us that it has the same effect as alcohol. Uh, so we use that analogy and that, that's why it's deemed haram. So putting your money into haram is obviously not permissible. What is the permissibility of practicing uh, martial arts? Also of uh, competing in combat sports. This is a good one. Bilal, you want to start? Oh no, go ahead. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong to understanding and defending yourself. Um, extracurricular, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, men should be with men, women should be with women, of course. And there's, um, uh, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said as well, uh, he has informed us to, uh, to defend ourselves and to be athletic as well, Hafiz. Yep. So what do you think about this? Uh, just in terms of like, um, like practice fighting or just, you know, having yeah. fun among the brothers of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yeah. and the Sahaba actually used to play fight. Of course. Yes. Right. Yeah. So there's nothing against that. There's a, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he was wrestling one of these big guys. He was one, he was a big person there. Nobody could uh, um, beat or whatever. He practiced, he, he, he did that. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to him and says, okay, so try yourself with me. And the Sakaar al Alam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam threw him down with one arm. Right, so I mean, wrestling and all these things is good, but you can't be just going around and uh, using it to punch people in the face or, or, or anything like that. So, is it uh, permissible to pray? <laughs> I knew I was gonna get this question. Is it permissible to pray behind an imam with deviant beliefs? So, meaning to say that can you pray behind someone who doesn't have the correct or the same aqidah as you? Hafiz Ab, um, you can start. Straightforward, no. You want a little bit of an explanation? Um, I'm going to quote Ghazi Amilat here. Yeah. Um, he mentioned that during the time of uh, the assassination of Hazrat Usman, anhu, wow, 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 wow. before Hazrat Ali Allah, accepted Allah, Allah. caliphate or khilafat, Allah, Allah. there was three days in which the assassin of Hazrat Usman was leading the prayers in Masjid al-Nabawi. Yeah. Right? And during those three days, none of the Sahaba came to pray. Yeah. Including? Sayyid including Ali. Hazrat Ali. And then... He goes on to infer is that to leave the jamaat of a deviant imam is a sunnah of the sahaba. MashaAllah. Right? MashaAllah. So MashaAllah, alhamdulillah, we have the, uh, the, uh, the obliteration of falsehood in front of me by Mufti yeah. Ahmed Yar Khan Naimi Sahib. So taqlid uh, from the quran and pak ayat, uh, we'll start uh, Surah Fatiha. Guide us to the straight path and the path of those you have favored. That is one evidence. Allah does not burden a person more than his ability. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you don't know, you have to ask. Yeah. Third, and Allah is pleased with the first and latter migrator, uh, Muhajireen and the Ansar, as well as those who follow them in goodness. They are also content with him. Meaning, this was the commentary, meaning Allah is pleased with them, with itba, those who make taqlid of the uh, Muhajireen and the Ansar. This is a proof of the validity of taqlid. Yeah. That's number two. Uh, that's one. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. This is also taqlid. 
So the also so, one of the one of the things is uh, like you mentioned about Sayyidina Usman, Sayyidina Ali, I'm going to take it another generation forward about Yazid and Imam Hussein. Azan was happening on one side, Azan was happening on the other, but there was two jamaats. So why didn't everybody congregate? So as someone will say, oh, because they were in war. No, namaz time was namaz time. And we see that in Jangit Jamal as well, where they, they gathered together for salah. There was one so jamaat there. There was one jamaat there. Here, there was two jamaats. And at the end of the day, it becomes down to, if somebody's sitting there, now you think to yourself, let's talk layman now, right? So for people to understand, is if you believe that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, na'uzubillah, is a man like me and you. If you believe that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is, is dead and gone, that, oh, he came and he's gone, he's like your brother, all of these things, stay away from those types of people. We have the utmost respect for the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and we follow those who love and respect and him. And of course, on Surah Luqman, verse number 15, follow the, uh, follow the path of the person who turned towards me. And then you have, of course, uh, Surah Tawbah And why should a congregation From their every group Now venture out to attain understanding of the deen And return to inspire people In the hope that they have saved Mashallah. Right And then it can go on and on brother The day on which the congregation will be called With their Imam Surah Bani Israel Let me repeat this one again for the wobblers That day <laughs> on which every congreg congregation Will be called with their Imam Surah Bani Israel Verse number 71 brother In front of me The day on which every congregation <laughs> Will be called with their Imam So uh, this is the evidences of Ishqo mahabbat Ishqo mahabbat MashaAllah I've been told that Taweez is haram and to wear it removes a person from Islam. What is the reality of this? What is the reality of Taweez? Now, a lot of people, you know, they wear the Taweez. What is Taweez? Taweez is, you know, there could be ayats of the Quran. Taweez can be, you know, surahs from the Quran, etc. Wearing the Taweez is, uh, is it permissible? What does it do for you, etc. I think that's a, it's a good one. So we'll turn it over to... Uh, uh, we have um, again Bukhari here. Sharif. Bukhari Sharif in front of me. People who <laughs> don't want to see. Okay, so faith healing through the Quran. Okay. Hazrat Urwa ibn Zubair reported that Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala reported that Rasulullah wasalam, in his alignment during which he passed away, he would recite the Quran and blow on himself. Mashallah. Okay, when his alignment got aggravated, I would recite them and blow on him and pass his hand across his body for it being blessed so the cure was to blow the quran and to put it on so brother if the quran is shifa. all hikmah and shifa right. then why can't you not write it you can feel for blowing it and um that's another one so faith healing again so it's permissible to use the Hazrat, ayats of the quran and blow it on yourself Hazrat ibn abbas reported that from rasulullah wasalam, that the prophet and companions Entered one of the Arab tribes, but they did not host them. Meanwhile, a scorpion stung them. Okay, so they re recited Surah Fatiha and cured them. Mashallah. And they got cured. Mashallah. This is on Bukhari Shif uh, in front of me, brothers. This is not something I'm making up. The reason why I brought this uh, was to show the brothers that well, everything that we prove Quran is the Quran and, and Sunnah. It is not uh, bid'at and it's not one of these things. Here, look, uh, one more. I have one more here, Umar. Um, Ji, Bismillah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Hazrat Abdullah bin Shaddad states that Hazrat Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha said, The Apostle directed me to direct it to use of spell of evil eye. Mm. Okay, she said she, for the evil eye, she reported that there was yellow spots on her face and then there was an evil eye affected by that evil eye so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said instruct the quran mashallah to read the quran mashallah. to Hafiz do shifa Hafiz billah say that some ayahs or surahs of the quran have virtue mm -hmm. right specific virtue in, in fact like surah fatiha the brother, brother amr was mentioning is is known as shifa the surah yeah. of cure shifa. right yeah. Yeah. there's also the the last four quls yeah. And those are known to protect us from evil eye and black magic. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi even narrated these in hadith. Of course. Right? Hazrat, Hazrat uh, Abdul uh, Aziz narrates that and Sabit both visited Hazrat Anas bin Malik. And Hazrat Sabit said, Oh Abu Hamza, I've fallen ill. 
Hazrat Anas said, the supplication which Allah's Apostle would recite and use a spell, I submitted, why? The one who banishes the pain give healing as you are the healer. There is no healer gives you grant a healing which leaves no illnesses. So Rasulullah used to do dua for them. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Uh, from the Quran. Um, so there's a question. I mean, this is going to drag on a little bit too much because there's a question about Sayyidah Aisha. Radiallahu uh, anha. You want to answer that question? Okay, so Sayyidah Aisha was married at a young age. How do we, how do we mention this? Um, some reports say, or from other people as well, they say that she was married at the age of nine. Yeah. Or sorry, the nikah took place at the age of nine, but they only lived together from the age of 15. Yeah. Now you have to ask yourself, in that day and age, a nine-year-old would be equivalent of today's 22-year-old, right? Yeah. Because you have, um, um, sorry, you have the, the age of a person, yeah. the, the average age of a person that they would live to, yeah. and the maturity of the person as well. Right. right. So if you take into account that she was done her she did her nikah at the age of nine, you have to look at it compared to today's, it would be like an early adult. You know you know what? This this misconception of uh, oh, you know, uh, it's it's not against Sayyidah Aisha, it's against the Prophet. So, so, yes. so I'm gonna ask them in British colony in the yep. nineteen early nineteen hundreds, a thirteen year old could marry a thirteen year old in America. 1895, if I'm not mistaken, you guys can search it. The average age of adulthood was considered to be 11. So you want to throw, you want to throw blasphemy against our Prophet ﷺ for marrying someone? You have to compare it to that day and age. A nine-year-old can say the Aisha radiallahu anha narrate hadith. Can she? Can she? She was a leader. People used to come to her radiallahu anha about hadith and learn knowledge. She led an army etc all of these things how can she be not like nine as in being an infant so this this is uh this is completely wrong just Go another ahead. thing G -G. is that getting married at such a young age like even like the single digits or like early tens yeah, yeah, yeah. teens yeah. it was common up until 100 years ago no 100 percent. nobody in for nobody like our grandparents with that. and actually grandparents. like uh also um brothers we have to understand it's not just the western world there's there's the other sects of islam that degrade hazard aisha sadiq yeah, as yeah, well yeah, that's what i mean so the quran says in al-azab the prophet is closer to the believers than their own selves and his wives yeah. and their believers, mothers, as regard to respect and marriage. Right. Do you understand? So we have to honor and love and respect Hazrat Aisha Siddiqah radiallahu ta'ala anha, no matter what. And, you know, and no matter what these people say, brothers, is their law different from ours? Who dictates law? That's the other question that yeah. we have to ask. Even up till now, there's uh, kids that are allowed to get married in the states who are 11 years old and 12 years old yeah, now yeah. up till now of course you understand That's so what I mean. like it's just you know what i mean but to prove all this hazard aisha sadiqa rasulullah said i saw you in the dream for three nights when an angel brought you uh, to me in a silk cloth here's your wife and when i removed the cloth it was your face wow. and yourself so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose, chose sayyidah Aisha, Aisha Sadiqa, all, all the marriages of the Prophet ﷺ are only done by the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want to go to a, a, a very good question. Um, one of the sisters uh, sent this in. It, it is said that we should refrain from opening up people's guna and mistakes. In today's, in today's day and age, sadly, many Muslim girls are sexually harassed, but the predators go free as these girls don't feel comfortable opening up about it. This is due to many reasons, such as opening up someone's guna openly, Worry, uh, sorry, worried of the after effects and the backlash that they may receive. Is this something that should be spoken about? That's my question since I opened the amount of girls that have been spoken to me is unbelievable. Meaning that a lot of people are speaking about this because it's happening to a lot of people because you have these imams and stuff yeah. that are... are, are deemed as predators and they you know they do things with young girls and listen, take man, listen i'm going to tell you this very nicely it's not you know and then people are going to start laughing again and all that like look you <laughs> chose to go there firstly i'm not going to lie to you You chose to speak to why couldn't you choose an alima for the sisters sisters choosing an alima now when okay in vulnerable times if the brother if the imam has done something to you that is wrong report it to the police yeah. Catch the predators. Like, I know we're talking about it. You're hurt and you're in despair. We understand that. Like, it's very hurtful to see that. And it's sad to see the imams. Yeah. They're in authority and in position. So, what happens to doctors, brother, um, when they uh, break the law? They go to jail. 
Lawyers. Yeah, they have an ethics board. Yeah. yeah. And then they can lose their license. So then why isn't that enforced with the imams? Why where's the imam council? Why aren't we raising this awareness? So, you know, if you're gonna exploit them, deal with it and take them to court. Yeah. yeah absolutely. You know, take these predators away. The other thing is also our mentality with these incidents that happen to our sisters. Not just imams, but just in general. When when the sister comes out in the household or family, they start looking at her differently. Yeah. And that's something we need to change. No, that's hundred percent. So just know that uh, there has to be so you should report it to the authorities. The authorities need to deal with it. And uh, you can't be afraid of any backlash. Did that person, that imam, that whatever, doesn't have anything uh, over you, right? So report it to the authorities. Let the authorities do the job. Don't fear the backlash. Fear, Stay away from him. Get fear away Allah, from him. right? We, we don't fear man. Mm-hmm. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, Allah make it easy for all the sisters studying uh, the deen. Salam, bro. Wa alaikum salam. I was watching the, po- <laughs> well, I was watching the podcast about Sufi cults. Is it wrong to go to Darbar Sharif and stuff like that and pray like everyone does? So the uh, short question is that there's a lot of things that have bad happen in, in these Darbars and Mazars and everything like that. You can go to a Darbar, read Fatiha. Uh, going to a, a Wali's Maqam is a, is a Sunnah of the, the Prophet ﷺ. Every day after Asr Salah, the Prophet ﷺ used to go to Jannatul Baqi. And do Dwai Magfira and Fatiha, etc., for everyone in Jannatul Baqi. But can you please touch on just real quick, because we got some more questions. Can you just touch on uh, uh, doing sujood to the grave and all of that stuff? Because that's what I think this question is going to. Bismillah rahman rahim Firstly, for the brother, I highly suggest that you download the PDF of Fatawa Africa from Allah Hazrat Fazil Ibrailvi. All the answers are there, and this is where we get our answers from our from our bazooks, our aima, our uh, ulama. Listen, when you go to the mazarat, there's one intention that you're going for. That this is the place, this is the maqam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this individual, this wali Allah. So you are obtaining blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but through this maqam, this holy place, this holy sanctuary. So when you're giving dua and you're doing dua, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you yeah. through where this environment is, through this wasila. Now, the, everything else that you see, my brother, that doesn't represent Islam if it's forbidden. For example, there's ikhtilaf on the issue of touching the grave. Mm. If it's your mother's grave, it is actually ordered for you and it is allowed. Well, there's ikhtilaf on the position, but majority of the rules of the Hanafis you can do, you can kiss your mother's grave and right. your, mo- your father's grave if they have passed away. If it's an awliya's grave, as I said, you visit for visitation and you go and you supplicate and then you leave. Touching the mazar, we should refrain. How about sujood? It's haram. Okay. Really? okay. It's haram. We shouldn't do sujood at all. Doing tawaf around the, the grave? No, these things are, uh, these things are innovations. Okay. Um, there's, no, <laughs> there's no reason to do it. Cha- uh, the chadar you can kiss that much yeah. and then go on your side brother like you have to you have to have an imam to teach you these things yeah. too as well there's there's mamulat of the fiqh involved in here as well so we got six more questions we're gonna go rip through them very easy nothing uh, nothing major uh, just short questions short answers just for the viewers as we pass the, the hour mark we want to get uh, through these questions what are some exceptions to go straight to jannah after death so the question is which people are guaranteed Jannah? Pretty much. The shuhada. Yeah. Um, it says in the Quran, whoever is killed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are guaranteed paradise and they're, don't consider them dead, they are still alive. My favorite ayah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so going straight to Jannah is uh, the shuhada. So uh, is it permissible to keep dogs in the home? If you do, will do. If it touches you, etc. Um, in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, um, these are some of the books that I brought for Dalil if the brothers were watching, but I forgot to bring the, the Mawatta of Imam Malik, uh, ta'ala and in there there's a chapter of keeping the dogs. If it's not for safety, if it's not for security, you cannot keep the dog in your household. Right. It is haram. Okay. And Rasulullah wasalam, said the one who has kept dogs for that purpose of pleasure, yeah. every day, Two rewards of Qirat are going to be deducted from you. Allahu Akbar. Okay? So some people have this uh, intention now of you know, keeping it for pleasure, but please refrain. It is haram. Okay. What uh, are men and women equal in Islam? Of course. 
It, of course they're equal. Equal in the sense of, brothers, Islam has given women rights. Of course. Islam, Islam has, came, that's why women have rights. The prophet in the Allah time of the position of the women for a time of jahalat, it was something else. It was scary. Yeah. We, don't want, we don't have time to explain this. But when Rasulullah Islam brought the Sharia, it enlightened, empowered the women. For sure. It gave rights to the women. Sure. Um, equality in the sense of... Uh, Neither of, superior over of the other. Superior, but yeah. we have to understand that the women's rights is also to take care of his man. Yeah. Okay. Hafiz Ab, do you have something to add? No, I just want to say that okay. neither gender is superior. Yeah, we other. can't just overrule and think that men are... They are equal, but in certain degree. Like a woman can't be an There's imam, right. etc. Women There's will right. never be a prophet. We cannot, all of those things. Of course, and we cannot forget the rights of each other. Of course. Women cannot forget the rights of their men, and their man cannot forget the rights of their household yeah. as well. But they are, they are definitely They're respected uh, equal in that sense. Yes. Uh, Christmas, <laughs> Christmas in Islam. What if we celebrate it for fun and we don't believe in it? So an Im imitation is haram. It is very bad to do that. It is so bad it can make you out of the fold of Islam. Imitating anything that has nothing to do with Islam. Why are you doing it? Yeah. Christmas trees and all this stuff Christmas has nothing to do. Christmas tree was a pagan belief. Uh, it was of course, right? right? Yeah. We talked about this already. We cannot do it as haram. Do maulid. <laughs> Rasulullah we are in the era of Rasulullah we have Sharia Muhammadiyah not Isai yeah. we're Sharia Muhammadiyah we're supposed to re revert to Rasulullah uh, have Mawlid Christmas is celebrating the birth, Christians belief of celebrating Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam's Mawlid we don't know when Jesus was born no. we don't know exactly what day there's ikhtilaf and thirdly when you believe in the Mawlid you believe in Hazrat Isa alayhi birth course, anyway. So, that's so you want, if you want to do it for fun and you don't believe in it, don't call it Christmas. Yeah. If you want to just give gifts, you don't have to have the tree. You don't yeah. have to have the lights. Just don't go and give a gift to your friend. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If you want to just do something every day. But Christmas, in, is, 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 it's a pagan uh, belief. Santa Claus is and all that stuff. So we don't, he's not we don't coming believe. to town. Yeah, he's not, and he's, he's not coming to my chimney. Uh, <laughs> do good people go to heaven even if they don't believe in God? We spoke about this already, Maher. I know <laughs> this is Maher. <laughs> um, listen, Allah is going to judge you by your knowledge. And this is the only judgment that I'm going to give. I'm not, I'm not anyone to give judgment based on uh, Qafir and Muhammad. You're supposed to die on Islam. And then Islam actually teaches you when there is a Qafir and someone is a non-Muslim, how to refrain from them. Yeah. So if he was not a Muslim, we cannot pray for him. Yeah. Simple. That's a Sharia. Um, good people, let Allah judge him for yeah. that. As far as I know, if the person has never come into contact or heard of Islam, then yes. That's as far as I know. I could be wrong, but that's, that's whatever. Right. Allah um, will judge you based yeah, on your knowledge. Allah is a judge, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of 100%. the day. 100%. Like you don't know what acts uh, right. you can do that will take you right. to Jannah, right? We know the and famous story know. of the prostitute and the dog who gave water and in, all of these things, right? So in, you don't. In Sharia, like yeah. in the Sharia as, as people of knowledge, we can only judge based on how they died. When yeah, someone yeah, yeah. asks how they died, sure. that's when we give judgment upon them. Right. To go into hell and heaven now, we're going to leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. and we yes. just leave it at these matters. Okay, so last question. I saved the best one for last was in regards to uh, the Shaykhain. So it's the month of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. And someone said of Ziliyat about Sayyidina Abu Bakr over Sayyidina Ali or uh, Sayyidina Ali over Sayyidina Abu Bakr. I'm going to start this the discussion off um, about uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Two things I'm going to discuss. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam mentioned that no one has more has done more for the deen that I am grateful for that I cannot repay his favor to Islam. And that is Abu Bakr as Siddiq, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repay his favor. Not now, a doubt. huh? Not a doubt. And so Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, meaning that the Prophet والسلام, is saying that he cannot repay. The favors that Sayyidina Abu Bakr has done, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, in regards to what he has done for Islam, meaning how much he has given. And then I'm going to read, read what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned, Abu Bakr wa Umar, Sayyida kahul al-ahl al-jannah min al-awwaleen wal akhirin. That Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Umar are, radiallahu anhum, are the... 
the ones who are leaders of the elders of Jannah. So anyone who's going into Jannah, the elders, if you left this dunya in the way of the of being old, your leader is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an and Umar Farooq. Now, it comes down to the permissibility of understanding this. So for those people who ask these questions and denounce the superiority of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, I'm going to say one thing to you. That did all of the ijma, what is it, ijma? That all of the companions, Allah be pleased with them, 124,000. Where do we get this number from? The last hajj uh, before the Prophet salam's visal. They have quoted that Kamopesh, 124,000 companions were in that hajj. The last hajj before the Prophet ﷺ left. So they voted ijma, meaning the, the mujtahids, all of the companions did baya on Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, meaning unanimous, unanimous decision that Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is the most worthy of all of the companions to take the, khali, the caliphate, then Sayyidina Umar, then Sayyidina Usman, then Sayyidina Ali, and then to tell you, the Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an, the line of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave baya to Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Now you tell me, right, Hafiz Ab, if Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq was not worthy, would Shere Khuda, Mushkil Kusha, Mawlai Kainat radiallahu an give his hand on the hand of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an? Afzalul Bashar Badul Anbiya bit Taqiq, without a doubt, with Bila Fasal, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an. You hear it every week, every khutbah. Afdal al Bashar, Ba'd al Anbiya bit Tahqiq, the greatest man after the prophets and the messengers. 100%. Okay. You were on about the favors of that, that Abu Bakr did onto, for Islam. Have you heard of the name of the Khawarij, the people of, of Khawarij? Of course. Those were the people who denied zakah. Yes. Even though Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu's caliphate only lasted two years, Gee. till this day, no one has ever rejected publicly or said i'm not going to give zakah yeah and that's that's one of the favors that he did for islam of course right if you want to talk about Hazrat umar radiallahu anhu um in the gathering of the sahaba in the gathering of sahaba an angel came to the prophet and he narrated a story yeah and then when umar radiallahu anhu asked he said i have glad tidings for you umar is that when you are in the qabr and uh, <laughs> the angels come to you and they ask you mar rabbuk allah allah you're going to say, Rabbi Allah wa mar rabbukuma. Uh, Who is your Lord? Allahu Akbar. And the angels are going to look shocked, <laughs> confused. And they're going to ask him the second question. Ma dinuk? Dini al-Islam wa ma dinuka? What's my, your deen, my religion is Islam. What's what is your, your religion? Deen? And then the angels are going to look shocked and confused. Were we sent to question Umar or was he, was he sent here <laughs> to question us? Uh, MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Once again, Sahih Muslim Sharif in front of me. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Sadiq radiyallahu ta'ala an Hadith Mubarak Abdullah Allah be pleased with them narrated the Messenger of Allah Allah's blessing as peace be upon him If I had to take a friend from my nation I would certainly take Abu Bakr al-Sadiq radiyallahu ta'ala an And then again the chapter saying who else after that Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu ta'ala an And quickly to end off so one more ahadith mubarak to simplify Jee. the shaykhain. Bismillah. So we, this can go on forever. We have so much yeah, dalil, yeah, yeah. but there's only one. Um, the Prophet Rasulullah says, Who is the most beloved person to you? <laughs> he, sallallahu alayhi wa said, Aisha, mm. of the women. Yeah, yeah. Then Aisha Siddiqa said, amongst the men, he said, Aisha's father. Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Who then? He said, Umar. And then he named other men. MashaAllah. So this defines the shaykhain, the tartib of the shaykhain. We have to follow in order of the sharia. Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, O Ali, Rosiallahu ta'ala. And it is the ijma of the Ahlu Sunnah that the greatest companion is Abu Bakr as Siddiq. And to deny that would be to denounce your own Islam. Of course. Yeah. There's no doubt about, about that. I know this is going to drag on and stuff. Yeah. So you know what? Uh, I'm going to end with this. Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu an asked Sayyidina Ali, who out of everyone who is more Afzal? Is you Baba Jan, right? You Baba Jan? He said, No, Abu Bakr. Uh -huh. And then he said, Okay, after Abu Bakr, it's you, right, Baba Jan? He said, No, Umar. He said, Fairly, after Umar, it has to be you. He said, No, Usman. 
Sayyidina Ali is saying this. And Najul Balagha. Pick up Najul Balagha. It's not our book. It's the books that those others uh, uh, deem as close to the Quran. Open up the malfuz of Sayyidina Ali during the battle of Safin with the letter that he wrote to Sayyidina Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an. And he states in there, Sayyidina Ali says, that out of all of those people that loved me the most, Abu Bakr even loved me, so stop having a war with me. He mentions it in that Malfuz in Najul Balagha that Sayyidina Ali even stated. So this is not even our Imam, even they're saying this, that Abu Bakr is more Afzal than all of them. So you want to know about Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, January 30th and 31st, uh, the rightly appointed Khalifa conference, day one and day two, 30th, 31st. Stay tuned and we will discuss more about that. So uh, I just want to turn it over, uh, not turn it over, but just thank uh, Hafiz Bilal, uh, Janab Amir Qadi Saab for a, uh, a good episode. You know, we got to give Shahada uh, or announce Shahada for someone uh, on, on live on air, which has probably never been done yet for us. So I just want to uh, thank you guys for, for joining. Thank you for being here. Um, and inshallah, uh, we also had a brother calling from a penitentiary. So it was good. Questions uh, were answered, hopefully. Um, and we might do this again. Uh, just a little bit more... Um, just uh, around just questions directly so inshallah so i want to thank you brothers for doing so uh inshallah we're going to conclude uh, as we've been over the hour mark um so i just want to say thank you very much for tuning in thank you for all the questions hope we answered them uh just to end off um mic'd up 416 on youtube like subscribe hit the bell icon share the videos uh share uh, follow us on instagram sufi council of toronto we also just launched sufi council in uk uh, Alhamdulillah with uh, Brother Salman Ashraf. So go like the page there as well. We've got a lot of good things happening. Next month, we're getting sponsored, uh, starting our sponsorship uh, program with Mike Top 416. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, call Mosin Patel, 647-328-7861. 647-328-7861. Remember that number, call him uh, if you want to be a part of Mike Top 416. And uh, if you want to donate to the cause, donate.sufiCouncil.com or, or e-transfer at Sufi Council Toronto. At, uh, at gmail.com uh, to support the masjid during these testing times uh, we appreciate uh, all of uh, the brothers that called in my two panel guests the ones behind the scenes jazakallahu khaira assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh